class is going to be um, probably an, roughly a lesson anyway. So today we're looking at the death of Xerxes. So um, it's very little, very little is known on the last years of his reign. Uh, generally, um, he's kind of depicted as in his final years. He's not really venturing too far out of Persepolis. He's spending most of his time and his energy and his money um, with building programs and just general administration. Uh, we have some records showing that there's a famine two years before his death. That's, you know, issues with growing stuff, uh, which obviously is a problem when people are hungry. Um, and because your crops or it's harder to grow stuff, it increased the grain prices. And supposedly he abolished some of his high ranking nobles. So um, you, you probably did have a lot of unhappy people at Xerxes, um, you know, post, post Greece campaign. Um, so in terms of his actual death, what I need you to understand um, is we actually don't have a super clear picture. That in itself is important because we've got people writing on it later and talking with people that knew people and all of that stuff. We just don't have a lot. Okay, we've got Herodotus. We've got um, the other one is Theseus, a Greek physician who worked in the Persian court. Um, look, what does appear to be the case? Xerxes is assassinated in his bedchamber. Okay. Um, the who, the why, that's where it becomes questionable. So Artabanus, some sources say it's his uncle, some sources say it's a different Artabanus and it's his bodyguard with the same name, okay? Um, supposedly um, assisted by a eunuch, with which also, depending on the account, has been given various names, okay? Um, so supposedly they kill Xerxes, then they tell the third born son, um, Cyrus slash Artaxerxes, um, that it was the older brother who did it. Artaxerxes orders the death of his older brother, blah, 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 he ends up as the king. So the why is a little bit confusing here because Artabanus couldn't really get the throne, okay? So um, look, Diodorus potentially in implicates that Artabanus was tried to kill Artaxerxes as well but failed. Um, but, but a bit questionable. Um, Megabizus, um, you know, supposedly he is a, I've lost it. I had it written down here somewhere. Anyway, um, Megabizus is kind of an important noble, um, as well, uh, of who did work with his dad by my research. Um, he's unhappy how Xerxes handled, uh, his Megabizes is married to Xerxes' sister, supposedly she's unfaithful, um, and Xerxes apparently didn't really handle it very well according to Megabizes. Um, we've got Artaxerxes as the son, obviously he ends up becoming the king when he is not the eldest, so he has something to gain, or what you'd call a motive. His involvement's unclear. Is he... Potentially an idiot that is led astray by Artabanus. Is he involved from the beginning? Uh, and he, or, so, or sorry, let me let me go back. Does he know what Artabanus is doing and does nothing about it? Or is he actually involved? Is he involved with Artabanus and then he ends up killing, um, killing Artabanus and the eunuch to cover his tracks? The idea that his older brother and was killed and then... He ends up killing his brothers soon afterwards. That doesn't doesn't look good for the innocence of Artaxerxes. Um, look, just as an outside um, thing as well, um, and please don't necessarily go and quote this as evidence, um, but we also know Amistris, his wife, is not happy of Xerxes' affair with Nice. Um, so she is not happy either and obviously she's got the ability to get quite close to Xerxes in his bedchamber because you have to understand this is a king we're talking about not anyone who's anyone is getting close uh, in his bedchamber so um, that kind of does implicate this being an inside kind of assassination or someone within his court. So in terms of the impact Xerxes is buried at Persepolis in a rock tomb um, due to there being no hard um, succession laws, 
um, succession laws, it, it kind of does lead to a bit of an unstable time. Okay, um, we the, we not the Xerxes kids kind of have a bit a few issues. Um, Ar Artaxerxes the one that comes out on top. Um, what is what is good to know is the heartland of the Persian Empire does remain pretty strong, um, but it's on the periphery of the empire that um, that we see issues um, and. Essentially speaking, we see a bit of the de the decline here of the Persian Empire into decadence and corruption. Decadence being super like rich and lavish and you know um, fancy and snobby and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, and luxurious, unnecessary lifestyle. Now, what is interesting to note: this is a very Greek perspective, but this Greek perspective ends up shaping our views of Persia for a long, long time, pretty much until you know, more recently with more modern historians trying to, you know, combat that and, you know, alter the historiography of it.